Hi everyone, good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Fifi, I'm Fifi McLeod, and Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. I'm just going to take a second and load our video in our comments. I'll give everyone a second to come in. I have everything in front of me that we're going to be using today. There we go. I just need to adjust my camera a little better so we can see exactly what I'm doing here. There we go. I'll give everyone a second to come in. And I'm gonna tilt that a little better so we can so we can see here. That should be better. So I can get everything in frame. Hi Glennis, thanks for joining. Hi Denise, thanks for joining. I'm just gonna take a second and wait for everyone to come in. And I've got our comments all loaded. And I'm really excited, guys. So basically, we have created our file folder journal. So the actual guts of this is done. So we just have to add in all of our pockets and all of our elements. So the first week we created our file folder journal. And the second week we decorated the entire outside in mixed media. So we have that done right until now. So now we can go back to the inside of the journal. So today what I want to do, um, I've provided a list of all the things that we're going to need. So basically, you're going to need your eyelets, you're going to need your brads. You're going, I use uh, little ones. I buy mine in bulk on Amazon. You're going to need some kind of an eyelet setter to set your eyelets. You need a ruler, a paper trimmer, a pencil, a pair of scissors. I have a small... Um, hole punch. This one says um, 5 eighths of an inch or 1.59 centimeters. So you just want something that's going to make a small um, a small punch. So I just wanted to share that. I'm using my awl to poke the holes for that. I have my papers for my kit and I have um, paper artsy fabric washi tape to help reinforce our center. And I have Fabri-Tac art glitter glue and then I just buy this on bulk guys it's like um, a jewelry cord and it's an elastic and I mean if you buy one like this um, I paid $13.99 Canadian for it online but I got it probably three or four years ago like that's how long this is going to last so we're going to use this for two of our elements um, today we're going to use this for our spine and we're also going to use it for the closure I will show you on the second panel so that's what I'm hoping to get done today that we can um, we can do the um, the spine for our signature, and then um, in here, this part here, I'm going to show you how to do this today for this part here, and we're going to do something a little different, and I'm going to show you. So we're going to do it like this, and then this here is a pocket for a tag right here, and then this closes. Like this and these spin this is on brads so that's what we're gonna do today and it just creates a cute little closure and you can add tags and things under here to um, keep it all intact so we're gonna do this today and we're going to get ready for our signature so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started what there we go we're gonna get started so I can show you guys what we're gonna do hi Sue hi Morg thanks for joining so for today, what I want to do, we're going to grab our piece of cardstock, because I mentioned that we needed to have a piece of cardstock. Oh, and then an envelope, guys. So like an envelope like this, it doesn't have to have a window. It just has to be an envelope like this that we're going to close. So you have to be able to close it. And if you guys can see, our envelope is approximately perfect width for our for this element here so I just wanted to share that um, if you're working in a different size you might have to trim your envelope so just make sure that you um, you do that on either side it, it's not going to matter what side you do that on so if you trim it all you have to do is add a little bit a little bead of your glue along the side that you open up to trim it and then you just um, glue it down so the width of it it doesn't matter so if it's not going to be perfect like mine is, that's okay. Just cut off the portion that you need for it to fit perfectly from uh, one one side to the other without affecting your 
your sides. So I just wanted to share that. So the first thing that we're going that we're going to do, we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure our spine. So it is not quite an inch because this was the lip of the file folder. So I have um, basically um, that would be three quarters of, of an inch. So I just wanted to share that. So what I want to do when I'm creating my spine, whatever the measurement is of your spine, you want to take that down an eighth of an inch. So on a like a Tim Holtz ruler, that would be one tick before your actual um, the mark of, of here. So I want to take that down to an eighth of an inch, which is right here. So then when I'm creating my spine, I want you guys to be able to see that, sorry. I want to create it that it's an eighth of an inch. So if this is my spine, then I'm going to take it down to here. I want to make sure that I have enough room to leave it at almost an eighth of an inch on each side so that it's not going to affect with where my journal is going to close on on either side. So I just wanted to share that. So essentially that's what I'm going to do here. And then I can line it up perfectly with my Tim Holtz ruler because it's a grid. That's why I love his rulers guys because they just they make a grid and then you know you have a perfect line every single time. And then we're going to measure the height of this. So essentially we're going to have this be this should be right at the four inch mark and it is so then we know to come up to the four inch mark so we need to take that off right right here for it to be perfectly lined up hi rachel thanks for joining love hi mary thanks for joining hi sue so i'm really excited today guys we're going to make our spine and we're going to do the first panel in our book so for the spine, we just measured and we took down an eighth of an inch so that we're not going to interfere with our closure. And what I like to do, and um, I usually use scissors if I'm just, you know, cutting a small element or something, but if I'm doing something like um, the reinforcement for my spine, you're going to want to use a paper trimmer and it's just so that it keeps your, li your lines all straight. And then it's not going to... Um, affect it. And we're still going to use this piece of cardstock, so keep this handy. So essentially, guys, I have something that looks like this. Right like that. Okay, and the four inch mark, I didn't quite do that, right? Okay, that's all right. But see, it's perfect. So this is not going to affect my closing it this way and my closing it that way. So I find when I cut, whenever I'm doing a spine, if I cut it that eighth of an inch um, smaller than then my actual spine size, it gives me that perfect tiny little bit on either side to reinforce your spine without, without it um, affecting your, your uh, closing method. So I just wanted to share that. So then I'm going to cheat and make two of these. So all I have to do is line this up now to here. We want two to reinforce our spine here. So then I just have to make like little tick marks, if you guys can see, of where to cut. And then I can line that up again in my trimmer. So you want to have two of them. Just so that we um, know exactly where it is. There we go. Okay, I didn't do that right. That's okay. Just have to line that up a bit better. This is perfect here, but that's not perfect there. See, sometimes that happens. So we just have to line it up so we're perfect. And yeah, right there on the one inch mark. What? Sorry, guys. Sometimes that happens. So the bottom part's perfect, but the top part is not. It shifted on me and didn't cut straight. So now I just have to very carefully come down and make sure that I'm putting pressure here. So I mean, this shows you guys too. 
So if something isn't straight and it hasn't quite worked out, that's okay. Just put it right back in and improvise. So see, I was just off by that tiny little bit. So you can always just do what I just did to fix it. And then I've got that weird little spot here because I probably need to replace the blade in this one. And that's okay. We just, there we go, line it up. It happens and we improvise. All right, so here, this one was just a little bit long. So I'm just gonna take my, my pencil and I'm just going to make a tick where the very top is. And then I can take my scissors and I can line that up and give it a snip. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So just make sure it's perfect first. Because again, it's only paper. So if you make a mistake, you can always recut it. It's no big deal. That's how I look at it. It's only paper, guys. And I know I have an absurd amount of paper. <laughs> there we go. And I'm just going to line that up so it's perfectly even. So now what we want to do is we want to take this little, these two little pieces of paper that, we, that we've cut and we want to make our faux spine. So I'm going to glue them together. So I'm going to put glue all on one side. And I'm just using PVA glue. So it can be anything. It can be Aline's Tacky Glue. Um, I'm using Art Glitter Glue. Use whatever you have. I have... Um, I don't think my pin stainless steel. I'm getting little rusty bits here. And that's okay. Because I like all things grungy, so that doesn't bother me too much. I'll just have to find a better pin. The one that um, came with my art glitter glue bottle, the um, the ball fell off of it, so I have to re replace it. I just wasn't sure if this was stainless steel or not, but it's it's definitely not if it's coming out rusty. Here we go. Just stuck in there a little bit. I always find these tips to be finicky. Come on. I don't want to have to switch to my fabric tack, but I might have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to. That's okay. Um, what GSM am I using? This is a 110 pound, uh, Nina. I like Nina. So basically I have two, two types of Nina. I have 120 pound, which I believe is 300 GSM. So the 120 pound I use for mixed media and the 110 pound I use for, um, like my, cra my crafting like this, for making journals, elements and stuff. So it's, it's on the thick side guys, but it's not too thick. This is the stuff I stick through my printer, too. So here we go. I'm just going to use Fabri-Tac for this, guys, just to save time, because that's kind of being finicky. There we go. And Fabri-Tac will stick anything. It'll stick paper, glue. You just don't have any playtime. So, like, once it's down, it's down. There's no wiggle room. Not like the art glitter glue that gives you um, approximately 25 seconds. And the lean's probably about 35 seconds. So I just wanted to share that. That's the difference between the glues. There we go. So I have something that looks like this. So I've reinforced that. And now what I want to do is glue this whole thing right here down to my spine. So same thing. I'm going to take my art glitter glue. Sorry, not my art glitter glue. My um, fabric tack, And I'm just going to glue right along here. Yeah, that's being stubborn. And it doesn't matter... Um, Either glue is fine. This is very permanent. So once you have it down, that's it. It won't come back up. Now, the other thing, if you do not have fabric washi tape, you can always use a little strip of fabric to reinforce your spine. So if you do not have, um, if you do not have um, fabric washi tape, you can go ahead and you can use a strip of muslin fabric um, or whatever you have and you can put that across here. So I just wanted to share that. So I have um, I have um, 49 in market 
Um, this is repositionable fabric tape. So I am going to, and I don't want it to be repositionable. I want it to be permanent. And it doesn't matter, guys. Mine's about, yeah, mine's, a, mine's an inch. So it's going to go over, over both sides. And that's okay, because I will show you. It kind of reinforces it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my fabric tack down like this. And this is going to reinforce our spine so we don't have to worry about um, when we when we go to put our eyelets in, it's not going to um, damage it in any way. Like it's not going to, um, our spine's not going to um, buckle. It's going to be strong enough to withhold the, the center signature. So I just wanted to show that that's why we're doing this. So again, I'm taking my, my fabric tape from 49 and Market and I'm just going to put it down evenly directly across here just like that oh, I love it it's so beautiful this is their um oh, what collection is this Avesta it's called it's so pretty so I've gone even to here at the bottom and then straight to the top and then I would just use like a bone folder just to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles. Just like that. And that's how we reinforce our spine. Here's a little piece of fabric hanging. Because it is fabric tape. There we go. And the file folders, I'm not sure what their GSM is. Um, it's just like a regular manila file folder. Um, the same kind of file folder that you would use um, like for... Um, your documents and um, I, I know that these aren't readily available in the UK just use whatever you have um, these are the ones that we have in, in uh, North America that are standard to us you can use the one that um, like holds your file folders in your um, filing cabinet it's the same kind of um, this same kind of um, material so I just wanted to share that or um, you can glue pieces of like tape pieces of cardstock together as well. Okay, I lost my all. That's what fell. Okay, I got it. There we go. So that is our spine. So now what we want to do is figure out approximately where we want to put our holes. So for this method here, we only need two. We don't need to have them. Um, Perfect. Thanks for sharing that, Rachel. So Rachel mentioned that she used um, A3 card. So that's perfect. Hi, Linda. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining. Here we go. So now we're going to figure out where we want to set our eyelets. So I don't like to do them too, too close to the edge. But I do like to have have it so that I have enough room to um, to put my oops, to put my, um, my my pages in. So we're going. So now we have one inch here on the actual um, tape. So then I just go to the very center, and that's where we're going to set our eyelets in the center. So I want to go probably if I take my Tim Holtz ruler. I don't want to go a half inch because that would be here. So maybe um, that would be a quarter, I guess a quarter of an inch that would be. And then so my first one is going to be right here. That's where my first hole is going to go, right there. And I want to do the same thing from the top. So I'm going to flip my ruler around and use this box right here from the top so that I can make my mark. Whoop, sorry guys, I'm stuck. There we go. Just showing you guys a simple way to kind of figure it out. So here we go, right like that. And then I can make it right along here where that center mark is here. There we go. So that's approximately where I'm going to want to set them. So we don't need three eyelets, we only need two. 
because essentially um, it's going to come around and tie to the center. And then, um, as I showed you, your, your pages are going to slip under that and then close in there. So I'm using a crocodile. Um, this is just the handheld one. There's the big bite, and you can use any eyelet setter or a hole punch. So I have two settings here. I have a big one and a small one. I want to go to the small one, and I want to create my hole. So essentially, I'm going to put this in here and line this up with my little hole here. And mine's from We Are Memory Keepers. But you can use any eyelet setter that you like. Whatever you're used to using. There we go. So I have my first hole. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to line it up. And match it up. I need my pokey tool because I can't see through there. There we go. I just have some, there we go. Some debris stuck. There we go. And then I'm going to line it right up to here for the second one. There we go. Now what I want to do, when I'm taking the jewelry cord, what I like to do is figure out the length, but I don't want to have this loose. This is one thing that you want to do that you have tight. So essentially what I'm going to do is enough cord that I can go all the way around and then I'm going to tie this in the middle. So it's going to look something like this, if you guys can see, like this, where I'm tying it in the center. So I would want to cut it, guys, so this is how I figure it out, just like this, and just do one of these, like this, so this overlaps, and then I'm going to cut, tie this off, and like I'm going to cut it right here. So that's how I know approximately how much I want for this without, without wasting it, right? So that's what I do first, just kind of determine where I want my, my um, elastic cord cut. And then I'm going to take my eyelets and I'm going to set them. And for anyone who's new to using a crocodile, it is weird because it feels like you're using it upside down, but you're not. And I'm going to take two eyelets here. And mine are just a standard, I think it's a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch or um, I, three millimeter, I think it is. Um, they're just a standard one. And so my crocodile's here, and I have it on my, my brass fitting, and that's the correct, um, the correct one for that. And then what I want to do is go from the outside in. So on the outside, I want to be sure, you guys can see that, it like that, from the outside. So we push it in like that, and it's going to be stuck, it's not going anywhere. And then this one here, the side that has the, um, that thing, that's going to the other side. And we clip it in. Yeah, like this. Come on. There we go. And then once you have it in, then we clamp it down. Just like that. And it sets our eyelet. Just like that. There. Perfect. Then we go to the other side. There we go. Yeah, just to show you guys like that. And we're going to put this in here. Oh no. I saved that from going on the floor. Okay. Come on. There we go. Perfect. So I've got that in here. We're going to flip it around this way. And again, we're going to have that spot. You guys can see this one here pushes up and down. That's the one that goes on the bottom and the flat side goes on top. So it feels like it's backwards, but it's not. So I just wanted to share that. And then that little spot that flips up and down is going to go into our eyelet hole here. There we go. And then we're going to line it up and you give it a good squeeze. There we go. To close our eyelet. Perfect. Just like that. And that's how we set eyelets with our crocodile.
Um, there are other tools that you can use. I have some of the old We Are Memory Scoopers tools and stuff before that was invented. So whatever you, you uh, want to use, go right ahead. So essentially, we have our eyelet set on the outside. Then I'm going to take my, my jewelry cord and I'm going to come up. So I'm at the top and bottom. I'm going to come up through and I'm going to go in. So essentially, it's going to look like this. So it comes from here to here, goes through to the other side. Now we're going to flip it over so we have this. Now the other thing too, if you want to take it a step further, you could put, you could add beads to here. Uh, you could add a charm to here. I've seen people bead them and do different things. I like to keep mine relatively flat because we're going to be doing different elements in here. But I just wanted to share that um, you have absolute creative freedom with that. So if you wanted to add something decorative to there, you can absolutely do that. But for this one, I'm not going to. So now on the inside, we want to make sure that we have enough tension that we're going to be able to close and re and, and it's going to hold our signature without um, with, without um, it falling out. And it's going to have some give over time. So essentially what I've done, so if you guys can see, I'm going to pull this right in. And I'm looping this one time. So it's looped once in here. And then I'm going to go ahead for this side. So once I have it to the um, to a good tension, I'm going to put these together and flip it twice. So I'm going like this, and I'm doing a third time. So it's it's going to be two. And then essentially, guys, I can pull this tight right here in the center, just like that. So I have a good tension. There we go. So now that's completely reinforced. That's like a double knot, so that's not going to come out. And then I can take this and I can chop this right down just like that. And it's not going to come out. There we go. So again, my waist is minimal for that there. And then that's our, our center for our signature. And again, you could add beads and stuff to here if you wanted to as well. I just don't want to affect, um, the closure and I don't want to affect, um, the, the center signature making it too bulky so I just wanted to show that so that's why I wouldn't to the inside but absolutely if you wanted to add um, a little something to the outside you could see and my tension's good so it's gonna stay together okay so now that our spine is done and our stuff is reinforced I want to come over here to the second panel so today we're gonna focus on this one and I think that this might interfere just a tiny bit so we're just off by like just a smidge. So I'm just going to come in and I want to take off just a hair. And it's right there that I'm concerned. Okay, there we go. That looks, see, that looks much better. Yeah, right like this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And then that's not going to, yeah, you want to make sure. See, now we're perfect right against our spine. Okay, so the other thing that we're gonna do with our flap, we don't need to have it um, so big. So if you guys can see this one, and I'll do this often, I will keep bringing us back here to compare. So we don't have anything like that at the top. We, we're gonna add, add our piece in, and at the bottom, we have um, this small flap. So that's why we left this piece. So what we're gonna do, essentially um i'm gonna bring it to about here so if you guys can see so from where we've left it if we fold it like in half that will be perfect so if you guys can see and i'll give you a measurement so you know exactly what i've done um we are looking at two inches about two inches from from the bottom so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to trim this exactly like that. And we'll keep this because we'll use that for something. Oh, and I'd like to make that a little bit more straight. There we go. That's better. 
So then we're going to take our envelope. Yeah. And when we line it up, it'll be perfect. And we want to make sure that it is even with our top. So what I want to do, and this is just like a quick little, little, um, way to get it perfect. So we're going to line it up perfectly with the bottom. Right here is perfect. And then we're going to line it with the top and make a crease over. So essentially what I've done is I flipped it over like this. So again, I want to make that more straight. This is a, like a preliminary line kind of thing. So we'll make that more straight, which is probably more like here. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come up here and we want to pull our tab. And we want to close our envelope. Off. There we go. So our envelope's closed. Then we want to take this and we want to flip this over like this. And then essentially what I want to do is come over here and taper this. So we've got something that looks like this. Maybe even a little bit more. Right, like that. And then we want to reinforce that part here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the top off my art glitter glue. Because you can use it like this as well. There we go. That's better. Just being stubborn with me today. There we go. And then we're going to be able to attach that to here. Just like that. But before we do this, what I want to do... And we have, so this is our lip that we're going to attach to here. Um, we want to go ahead and we want to mat all in behind there before we attach this. So I'm going to grab my papers and they're just, yeah, right here, guys, to the right of me. And I can essentially decide um, what papers I want to use. So maybe we'll do maybe this one here with the flower pots. Yeah, I like that. For the inside. Okay, that'll be our first one. And again, as I go, I just make little tick marks and then I can decide exactly where I want things to go. And again, leave things an eighth of an inch between um, your fold lines and your center marks. So again, I'm going to go from here to here. And that's my little tick mark. And I'll throw that in my paper trimmer. Hi, Angela. Thanks for joining, love. Here we go. And I can line this all up. And I think that's straight, just to make sure. Yeah. There we go. So I can use this right along the panel. And you can use any papers you like. You can use your scrapbooking papers. You can use digital kits. I tend to use my digital kits because I have them available. And it's a great way to show how you can use them in different projects. But use what you have. So we're going to cover this whole back panel. And again, you didn't have to do that either. You could have done mixed media just like you did the front. So I just wanted to share that. So um, if you decided that you wanted to do mixed media on the inside and the outside, you don't have to um, use papers. You could do that as well. So I just wanted to share that. So just use whatever you have, whatever inspires you. There we go. So I have this panel that looks like that. And, yeah, I want to make sure that, yeah, it's perfect. It's not going to interfere with my closure there. And then, essentially, what I like to do, um, I don't worry about the measurement between things. I'm just going to flip this over, and then I'm going to trim. So this is what I do. I just trim my elements so that they're exactly perfect and symmetrical with, like, the top and the bottom of my projects. So just like that. Where I'm concerned about measuring is, like, side to side, 
and where things line up. And again, a cute little scrap that I could use for something else later. So I'll put that aside. Um, this one here that says inspire. So I could do something like that, guys, because I, I don't need to mat the, um, well, I probably should mat the inside. We could do something like this in bits and pieces. That's probably a good idea. Let's do that because we essentially want this whole thing to line up. And you're going to see the inside of here with this one. So we want to cover the whole thing first. Um, do we? Or do we want to do the outside first? Yeah, sorry guys. We're going to want to do the outside first. Because we have to put a brat in here. And I have a, th um, a dimensional... Um, sorry guys, a dimensional like closure. Yep. And we want to be able to cover our brat on the other side. So I just wanted to share that too. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, let's do this spot here with inspire and create. We'll, um, yeah, we'll line that up to the top there. Whoops. Sorry guys. So we'll do the outside first instead of the inside. Just wanted to share that. I just pulled the art glitter glue tip off my art glitter glue bottle because it was just, it was clogged and being really stubborn. So now I get something that's still thinner than Aline's tacky glue, but it's not as thin as the, um, the precision, precision tip, but it's still going to work good. Okay. So now I just want to, yep. And I like to use my bone folder a lot to line things up, make sure things are straight. Make sure we've got no air bubbles there. So now inspire should be the word um, that pops there. So now I can come down here. And we're going to cut this two ways. So I'll show you guys. Here we go. So this here. We're going to cut it this way. And we're going to cut it this way. So make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. And then we're going to flip it this way. And over. And then we can snip it right across here. If you guys can see that. Right across here, so we're perfect. Yep, and then I can just um, refine it from here. Yep. So you got to be very careful that you don't cut the bottom edge of your file folder, you're just wanting to trim that piece of paper back. There, so essentially it looks like this, guys. Just like that. And that's going to sit up like this. And then we want to cover this this part here, but not till after, after we set our brad. So I've just dropped my stuff, guys, just one sec. I dropped my paper and my brads. Never fails. <laughs> Especially when you're live. There we go. Okay. Oh, for my digital kits. Um, well, I just use regular copy paper. So that's what this all is, guys. Just regular copy paper. I use Hammer Mill Bright. And I find it to be really great. And um, I also use Nina 110 pound card stock for the elements. So when I do my journaling cards and my tanks, I do that all on 110 pound. So I just wanted to share that. Um, so it's nothing fancy. And use what you have. And the same copy paper, guys, I will put through my oven and do coffee dyeing and coffee staining. So I just wanted to share that too. So. And same with all my mixed media. Like, some people prefer to buy, you know, the special mixed media papers. I don't even treat mine. I use a 120-pound Nina, and I just find that to be good enough. 
and a lot of the time too or if I want the other thing I did I ended up picking it up at my dollar store I found 300 GSM or 130 pound um, watercolor paper so this one's super thick especially for watercolor paper and it's textured I got this at my dollar store so to me this is just as good as anything cold pressed that I'm going to find on Amazon for triple the price so if you find it at your dollar store or somewhere where it's more affordable feel free to do that but you don't need um, any kind of like anything special and I don't even gesso mine I just go right into doing mixed media so I just wanted to share that I find as long as you're um, you're drawing your layers it seems to be okay there we go and I have this one on here oh I didn't want to map that yet that's okay we can we can do something else over it I'll show you that's all right. I got talking and I forgot <laughs> that's okay we can cover it you know what we can cover it with some fabric washi that'll be fine I'll show you guys it's just another another hack so if you do what I did and you map this first before adding your brad it's okay you just have to add some fabric washi tape or some washi tape to it any washi will be fine because it'll just stop the the brad from showing okay I just want to line this all up make sure I'm nice and straight here there we go Sorry guys, I just want to get right in here. There we go, and get that straight. There, perfect. Okay, I'm super happy with that, so it's not going to interfere with my closure. With my closure. So essentially, guys, we have something that looks like this. The whole thing's matted on the inside now, just like that. Oh, and then what I want to do too. So this here is covered by washi. You're not going to see any eighth of an inch gap. I could take a minute now. Um, before you mat two sides and just take your distress ink so I'll show you guys this too because we'll just we'll do this completely step by step together guys so there's no surprises and no oh what do I do because if you didn't show us I'm going to show you guys everything so we're just going to take some distress ink and this just makes it look vintage so this is our thing with the with the um with the gap here because essentially this panel, guys, we're going to build it up. And that's why we want that gap in here to hold our papers that are going to be between here and here. So I just wanted to share that. Because this one here is going to be relatively flat. But we're going to add some stuff in. But this one here is going to be um, three-dimensional elements. So you're not going to see this part because we're going to, to, to map this as well. But um, not until we have our elements done. So we're just going to do one panel each time. And I'll show you guys. So we're doing this one today, but I want to go ahead and we can ink these up. So just this small portion right here and right here, because there's not going to be anything covering that. You're going to see that file folder. And if you don't like that, you can add some paint. Like see how I've got Manila is showing. I could take some paint and cover that if I wanted to. Um, I don't have it at my desk right now, but I will. I'll take some paint and I'll cover all that. So you're not going to see it um, when we get there. Okay, so then what I want to do is take that same, sorry guys, that same piece of cardstock. That's a smaller one. Okay, this is our envelope that we've sort of prepped. And then we have... Um, did I drop it? Sorry, guys. Our pieces are there. Oh, no, it's under the paper trimmer. Okay, so we're going back to that original piece of cardstock that we have that we've sort of cut down. And then um, what we want to do is we want to take our little circle punch and we want to punch. Um, so we're going to need for this, I would say two circles. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch two. One, two. Just like that. And then I'm going to pop them out so they're about here. So we're going to make that, um, that closure that's going to sit right here. And I think we've got it at the top as well, do we not? Let me see. Just a, Oh yeah, we've got a smaller one at the top here. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to... Um, yeah, we're going to punch that at the top as well. So we need four. So one, two... Three... Okay. And... And four. Perfect. There we go. So with these ones, what we're going to do, I'm going to move this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just for now. Okay, there we go. Pull these up. Here we go. Okay, while we do this part. And I'm all sideways again. Sorry, guys. Must have banged that. I'm just noticing now. Sorry, guys. So we'll take our distress ink. And we're just going to come in. I'm going to add a little distress ink to the background here. Just like that. So we're not white and we look vintage. Just like that. It doesn't have to be like totally dark or um, anything in particular. There we go. Just kind of like that. So we have... You could have done this at a brown cardstock if you wanted. I just, I ink everything up. I just find it easier. Okay, there we go. And then this one like this. I guess we didn't really need to ever ink up both sides, but that's okay. I did that just to do it. Okay, so now we're going to take this side and add some glue. And we're going to glue two together, just like that. Just like that. Perfect. And the same thing here. And we're going to add a little glue. Like that. And glue the two together. Just like that. All right. Now while we're doing that, I'm going to come over to my, um, my die cuts. Here we go. So I like to keep like containers like this handy. So this is like bits and bobs and different things. Sorry guys, so you can see what's in here. There we go. So like random die cuts, different things that I have. Um, these are mostly Tim Holtz like labels and things for making different elements. I have some of my vintage field notes cut out in here. So I have some like, you know, labels and things. So that's the sort of things that I like to keep in a container. So when I'm um, creating and collaging and stuff, I don't have to stop to cut everything out. It's already done for me. So at the bottom here, if you guys can see, I have a whole bunch of Tim Holtz gears. So I've done these with um, um, on cardstock already. They're different sizes. There's different things. So I'm just going to pull out some of these elements. Okay, that one's way too big. But some of the smaller ones, like these are all great. And perfect so I can pull them all out I want a, like a bigger one at the bottom and then a very small one on top just like the other the other one and then if you have craft stock so I wanted to share if you have craft stock it's gonna end up being something a little darker than your card stock so that's the other thing too and some of these are just on card stock and other ones are on like a manila card stock um, so yeah we're just gonna Grab a few of them. So I'm going to put this aside now. And then I can come over here. And then we can kind of see what we have. Oh, minus that. Sorry, guys. No, it circles. Okay. So we have our circle bases. And we want the bottom one to be a little bit bigger. 
So I am going to use those, but maybe for the bottom one, we'll do a bigger punch as well. So I have this, this bigger one like this. Um, yeah. I think this is a one inch. Whoops. That one on the floor. One, two. We'll get this eventually. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there. <laughs> that one landed on the desk. <laughs> I'm throwing them everywhere. Sorry, guys. They land on the floor. It's a no-go. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take two, and we're going to glue them together. So we have a smaller one, and we have a bigger one. And I have an extra one. So that's okay. The extra one I can just throw into my container and I have it for later. And that's the other thing you can do too. You can make a bunch of these up in advance so you have them so you don't have to stop and make them. But it's good because I, whoops, I can show you guys my paper trimmer fell. I've got a leaning tower of pizza beside me of stuff. There we go. So same thing. We're just going to ink it up a little bit. And then what I want to do is take uh, maybe a darker ink. I could take, um, here we go, some ground espresso. And yeah, here's the, the ink pad for it. Here we go. And then I could take a, like a bigger one like this and I could ink that up like this. Here we go. And I'm going to glue a couple of these different ways. Sorry guys, I've got like cobwebs stuck to me. There we go. So essentially what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to glue my gear to it. So it's going to look something like that. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to come in and I'm going to glue it all down. Um, I might be going a little longer today guys, but we'll just, we'll get this panel done. We'll do this one until it's done and we'll do a panel, um, each week until we're done our until we're done our book and then we'll make this the center signature at the end actually no we'll make the center signature and do the cover at the end I always like to do the cover last because I find like I will damage the cover as I'm working on the book so I find that a lot of the time if I have stuff that's really um, like interactive elements and different things then I will wait until the end to do the cover so I just wanted to share that and this is kind of neat I will do this one in in a uh, the ground espresso as well. This one here. Here we go. And then here's the fun part. We get to like assemble the whole thing. So we have a tiny little bit of glue. Just like that. That side. And the art glitter glue dries clear. So that's the other great thing too. There. And then we have the two-dimensional sort of look. Now I want to take my my awl here and I want to poke the center of it like that once I have it. So I poke the center and then I can come in with my brad. So these are just little ones. These are not big ones. So these are like a mini, a mini brad. one and then we're going to put that into the very center of our closure like this so if you guys can see we've just made something that looks like this okay I'm gonna move that to the side so this is for the bottom and then I can kind of decide exactly where I want to put this so yeah right here's gonna be great so try to figure it approximately the middle and I'm gonna say right about there so if you guys can see, I've just poked a hole. Sorry, guys. I've just poked a hole approximately the center right up to the top. So that's where the big one's going to go, at the bottom here like that. And then I'm going to 
do one of these where I'm pushing it down. I find that's the best way to set them. And then I'm going to take a piece of my of my fabric tape like this, and then I'm going to cut it just like that. Just like this. And I'm going to put it across here just like that. And it can be any of them. It can be regular washi tape, and it can be that. Normally, I would do this between the two pieces of paper, and then I would do the washi tape and mat it between so you don't see it, but that's okay. This just gives it, like, um, a three-dimensional sort of element. And you're not really going to see that too much anyways when you, um, when you have that together like that. And then what's this, what this is going to do then is give us... See, and we spin just like that. That's going to give us that nice element there. And then we're going to do the top. So again, we've done it like this. And we've glued our thing together. We're fine. And this is going to go at the top just like this, just like that. And then that's going to go like this and like that. So if you guys can see, that's how this is going to go. Just like that. So we want to do our next one. And it's going to look like this, like we had. There we go. And we're going to add some smaller elements. So maybe we'll do this little gear here. There we go. Our little gear. Like that. And we'll glue it. Sorry guys, I hope you can see. So I've glued that to my little circle now. Just like this. So I have the gear here and the little circles here at the back, just like that. Okay. And then I want to add, this one's good, right here. Is it like a more, yeah. And then I can take all these and then put these back into my container because we're not going to use them. Just like that. And just put them back. And I can use them for the next thing. There we go. So that's why I like to have like my die cut, some of them cut out ahead of time. So I can do all kinds of little things. Yeah, and I have them for the Tim Holtz stuff too. And it's funny because when Tim Holtz um, released the crayons, um, I bought the two um, distress tins for them. Um, and it was all well and great until now he's got so many. Um, I would probably need four or five of those containers to hold them all. And so instead, I have a container from the dollar store that I use to hold all of his um, all of his crayons, and then they're all together in one place. So I like that better. And then I've taken his distress tins and I've put my um, like my paper dolls in one because I have a lot of them, and then my botanicals in the other. So and then they have a window on them, guys, just like this. So it's like ten packs of his. Um, botanical dies and you can easily you know it's die cuts and you can easily get to them right and same thing with the paper dolls so I find the distress um, crayon tins to be perfect for like your ephemera stuff and then again this one has my my um paper dolls so they're all in one place so I just wanted to share that So those are on the one side up there, and then that big con container tray that I showed you is on the other. And that's where I like to keep my die cuts, so they're kind of in one place. And then I have another one for the rest of my uh, Tim Holtz ephemera stuff, and the die cuts and different things. So that's how I like to do that. So here we go, we've poked a hole through there, and then we just need one little tiny little brad for here. Here we go. We'll have exactly and then so like all this sort of stuff like your Tim Holtz gears and anything that I like to use for elements when I'm making my journals um then I have it them pre-cut and and ready to go 
So that's the other thing I wanted to share. And then you're more likely to use your stuff too. Because I find if I'm if I just keep it, you know, um hidden away and I don't see it, then I'm guaranteed not to use it. Or more likely not to use it. Um so for this one, so this is what we're gonna do now. So this part here is not going to matter. This part here, right here. But what we do need to do is um, is map the rest. So, because essentially it's going to look like that, guys. So what we want to do now. We're going to take our envelope, so we've tapered the top like this. This is where it's going to attach. So I'm thinking even to make it smaller than this, almost like this strip, like a strip of washi tape. If that makes sense. I don't want it too big and bulky. It just needs to be something sort of like that. And then we can glue it down and then washi tape it across the top. So that's what we'll do to reinforce it. So I just wanted to share that. And then from here to here, um, this is our bottom. So now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to open this up. So the bottom part is an envelope that we're going to be able to tuck a tag into. Okay. So something like this. Um, um, here's my mixed media tag. So here's a nice mixed media tag that I've done with the um, infusions. And you just slide it in like this. And the great thing is the tag will go like symmetrical to here. There'll be enough room for it. But then see, I'm going to have a gap between here and here. And this is where the closure is going to go. So the closure is essentially going to be the stopper for a tag. So I just wanted to share that. That's why we're choosing a tag that's a bit shorter. Like, like a normal size tag is going to be perfect here. And then it's going to give us that little bit of room. And then our... So I'm not worried about um, punching right here into into this with without it affecting the length of it. So I just wanted to share that. So a tag, again, a tag this size is going to be perfect because our closure is going to be like here. And it'll work as like a, as a stopper. So I just wanted to share that. So, yeah, for the top, because that's at the bottom, like this. Okay, so for this side, we are going to grab another piece of paper. Uh, let's see. So for the outside, we could do... Oh, I like that. That's super grungy. Let's do this one. So it's one of my papers, and that has the number at the bottom. That'll be perfect right like that for the top. Okay, so we'll do that. So I'm going to cover this whole thing. Sorry, guys, I'm in a mess. There we go. We're going to, so that's the top, just like this, and then that's the bottom. We're going to cover this whole thing like this, all in glue. Just like that. We have about a minute to get that right while we're shifting it. There we go. Perfect. So I want to make sure that's perfect. Right to the top and bottom. And then we can fold it over. So that's what I like to do. Just kind of fold it over quickly one time. And then just... Yeah, whoops. So we need to add some more glue to this part. There we go. Just like that. Okay, perfect. Glue bits there. There we go. So I've gone right to the edge and I'm symmetrical with there. And we're just going to trim along the side of our envelope without taking off any of our envelope because we want to make sure that it's closed. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna go along the bottom, which we've opened up. All right, so then this side here is going to be perfect like this, and then this is gonna flip up. So this side here, we essentially wanna make sure that we, when we mat this, that we are going the right way. So we wanna do something that looks like this this way. So that, so it's going to be, if you guys can see this, because I made this, this was a, a common mistake I made in the beginning. So we wanna have it up and down to this side, and then when we flip it, up and down to this side. So if we were to do it the same way, it would be, it would be backwards. So we don't want it to be back. We want it to be backwards. So we want it to um, be opposite to the other side. So that's what I'm going for, for it to be opposite to the other side. So when we flip it up, it looks symmetrical to the other, to the other panel. So I just wanted to share that. And then I can mat this all the way to the bottom so that we're not having that look any different. Yeah, because it'll be the other side that gets glued down. If you guys can see that, this will be the side that gets matted down. Yeah. So this one here we want to completely cover. There. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this whole side we're going to glue like that. Here we go. And we're almost done, guys. There we go. So this whole side. I like that. Sorry, guys. Yep. And we're going to mat it. And move that out of the way for a second so you guys can see. I'm pulling it all towards me. Here we go. That's better. Okay. So we glued that down. And then this whole side. We are going to mat. It like that. Hi, Natalie. Thanks for joining, love. There we go. And again, we're just going to taper the side here. And line it up a little better like this. There we go. And right like that. Perfect. Now I just want to take a second and make sure that we haven't opened up our envelope anywhere. So we have two sides matted down. See, and this is our envelope. So if you guys can see that, and we have, we've opened it right here. So if this happens and we accidentally open up our envelope, all we have to do is give it a little glue, just like that, on one side, then we glue it down. Just like that, because that happens. So we just have to double check. And I had a little spot here too where this isn't matted. There we go. So fix that where it's not matted. And yeah, this is between here and here. And we'll fix that. There we go. So then where we've accidentally cut our envelope at the sides, that just reinforces it so that it's not going to, um, it's not gonna be an, op it's not gonna have an opening. You want it to be closed. And then here, that's the piece of paper that needs to be glued down right there. Perfect. So essentially we have something that looks like that. And then what we're going to do now is go to our book like this. Whoops, sorry guys. And we're going to attach all this. So now this part here is going to get glued here to the to the top. Sorry guys, I need to get in focus so I can show you. Okay. 
This part here is going to get glued to the top here. And then, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, like this. Okay. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to stand this up and I'm going to line this up so that we are exactly that quarter of an inch between each fold line. Here we go. Just right there. And that's the only por portion that we are going to glue down is this. Here we go. And we, because we covered it, we won't have to use washi tape. And then to see if you guys can see this part of my envelope will need to be glued down. Because that's not attached. But it is now. There we go. I just like to hold that for a second. There we go. So I am super happy with that. And it's going to go like this. And then our last little brad that we made that I've lost. <laughs> uh oh. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. The last tiny little one right here. And we have our brad through it. We're going to line this up right to the top, right about here. Here we go. And we're going to poke a hole. So we're just going to line that up and make sure. Yep, so right about here is perfect. And we're going to poke our hole through here. Add our brad here at the top, right like that. Open it. right like that. Another tiny little piece of fabric washi or just regular washi is fine. Here we go. And again, I'm using 49 and mark it. You can use whatever you have. There we go. And then we're going to close this just like that. And if you find, too, that you're over just a little bit, that's okay. We can take this. And we can just give it a little trim at the bottom. Just like that. And that might sit in there better. And that's perfect. See? You guys can see that? That's perfect now. And it's going to sit flat. Then what we want to do is take our jewelry cord again. And we want to just... Kind of give this a little bit like that and maybe a little bit more there so i've done something that looks like this there we go and then i'm going to come to the top and i'm going to take this portion of it here at the top i'm going to go underneath like this and underneath like that and i'm going to tie that into a knot just like this I'm going to get that to go underneath. Come on. There we go. Just like that. I'm going to tie it again over here. Perfect. And then I'm going to give that a trim so you don't see it we don't want to see this one there we go so that's pretty much hidden underneath there there we go and then I'm gonna make give this like a little tug so that sits towards the bottom here and then this goes here oh, like that and we wrap it around and that's our closure and that's how we close that guys like that on our envelope
or we can actually, hold on, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, this side. There we go. So that sits exactly even. And then we wrap it around. And as many times until, yeah, just like that, so you don't see it. Just like that. And you can get this little trim here. It's not all frayed. There we go. Perfect. So, just like that. And then you can tuck stuff in there. So, um, we could do a booklet in there. We could do um, tags, all kinds of things. You just tuck them in, and then it just it holds everything in place. So, I just wanted to share that. So, again, it does bulk up this element here. And then we're going to add things here to bulk up this element here. So, I just wanted to share that. That's why we needed the... Um, quarter of an inch spine. So I just wanted to share that. And it'll be the same here for the other interactive elements that we add. So that was today's video. We've added our center. Um, we've added our center um, positioning for our signature. So we've got this all ready for our Traveler's Notebook style journal. And then here we added this closure here. And again, for this interactive element here, where we can add a tablet or a booklet to here underneath here or over top, however we want to do it. And we have it all matted. And again, we can take our distress ink and just add our final details. So I'm going to do that so we're ready for next week. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm super excited, guys. This is starting to take shape and we're starting to get there. And I'll move that up so you guys can see fully. And it says inspire on there. And then if I wanted it to come from the other side, I would just do this and have it come from here. So I just wanted to show that I could have it come from this way or I could have it come from that way. So it's whatever you guys want to do. Just so what, It just depends on how you line um, that top one up. Like that. Here. All, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. And you guys have a fabulous week. And I will be back on Tuesday. And we will continue with um, the, the center element here. So we'll map this and add our pockets in. And the other thing I wanted to show you super quick is that um, what I've done with some of the pieces left over from my file folder is I've just created that element going all the way up. So I want to do like a tiered pocket, if that makes sense, where it's kind of like this, guys, and we're going to map the whole thing. And then we can make like a tiered pocket that goes on top of here that's kind of interactive. And then we can add more pockets going in. So I just wanted to share that. So this is going to be kind of like um, the side of the pockets kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do here. So if you want to go ahead and just do that with your with your bits that you've cut off, that's what I did here. And I just took the uh, file folder element here and I just um, like traced it on both sides. To make the, this the, the element here and then the element here, if that makes sense. Just like that, guys. So that's how I've done that. Or if you like, if you don't have a special punch board and you want to make those um, file folder elements, you can do that. I have some dies as well, so I'm going to show you some different things. But um, if you don't have the dies, just improvise with something like that. So I just wanted to share that. And next week I'll have the dies ready so we can start doing the rest of the panels. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a fabulous week. And again, I'm Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. You can join me on YouTube, um, Fifi the Paper Crafter on Instagram. And um, my my um, my group is called uh, Fifi the Paper Crafter's Creative Community. So just wanted to share that. Thank you so much, everyone. And I will see you back soon. Thank you. Bye.